Hello. Well, I'm here to talk about three films that uh, I have seen a good couple of times already. And um, uh, I'm quite confident in talking about them now, but I'm going to try and be as brief as I can, yet try and get my point across as best I can in as short of a time as I uh, am able to, because, you know, I can sometimes just talk. So let's just get into it. Um, the first movie um, was a, uh, is a uh, Knives Out, a uh, fine film, uh, a whodunit, you know, did a, uh, and the film did a, uh, Christopher Plummer's character, uh, kill himself, or was he murdered? And if so, who did it? You know, somebody in the family? Somebody outside of the family? What was their reason? What was their motive? Um, you know, these, uh, questions are what persist, and, um, yeah. It's a, it's a decent film, alright film. Made by Ryan Johnson, who uh, made The Last Jedi, uh, the eighth Star Wars film, eighth installment. Uh, I personally am not fond of that movie, as I've said before. If you enjoy that movie, <clears throat> that's great. Um, it just wasn't for me. And who knows, maybe as time goes on, I'll enjoy it more. Not sure I will, but you never know. Things like that happen. Um, I will say I actually did kind of see the ending coming quite early on in the film. Uh, with movies like this where it's like a... Who did it? What happened? Um, the more I've watched movies, the more I'm able to sort of... Of like this, where who did it and why, I'm sort of able to... Uh, kind of guess who did it. Um, I mean, not necessarily how exactly, but if it's not already explained, though here it, I will say it seems to be explained, but yeah, uh, I kind of guessed what happened at the end of the film, and uh, yeah. Um, I'm not going to say that's a failing on the movie's part, Though I guess you could see it as that, as that, but that, that's something that I've actually um, have uh, noticed that happens often anymore with these kind of films. I'm sort of able to guess what happens, and most of the time I seem to be right, or at least close enough. Um, and sometimes I'm wrong. You know that happens to everybody if you sort of think about what happens at the end. I remember at the end of Interstellar, I actually kind of guessed what it was, what this ghost was. I actually guessed, and I was right. Uh, I said it in my head because I, I knew if I said it out loud to somebody I was with, I would be completely wrong. It would have been something else entirely. So, yeah. Uh, but, you know, it is a fine film, no matter what, you know. I, I didn't feel like I wasted my time, so I think that's a good thing with with movies. A movie should never make you feel like you have wasted your time, because if uh, a movie does that, then it did a terrible job. To me, at least. Um, well, on to the next movie. Parasite, uh, the film that uh, won Best Picture, Director, uh, Screenplay, and an International Film. It used to be foreign film, but now that's changed. Why, I don't know. It just did. The Kim family, um, you know, the uh, uh, street smarts, as it's over the back, which is quite true, but they're quite poor. Um, they meet the Park family, uh, the son of the Kim family. Um, gets a job to teach Mr. Park, Mr. and Mrs. Park's daughter English. And, uh, 
one by one, each member of the Kim family with a different name and alias, they they get jobs uh, at the uh, for the they get they work for the uh, Park family, you know, and it's it's it is quite interesting how all that develops and how that comes about. Um, um, and it does have some commentary about the rich and the poor and the distinctions between them and how some circumstances between one or the other is not fair and all that. But I found moments like that when it's trying to get that point across, I found that to be a bit too obvious. It's like it's trying a bit too hard to sell that point to the audience. Um, for me, I kind of wasn't a, I wasn't fond of that. Um, that's me, though. Uh, perhaps for you, if you've seen this, maybe you'll like that. And if so, that's fine. Um, for me, I just wasn't fond of that. I kind of wished it just didn't try and shove it in your face. Like, they try to make that a good point. Um, but it does show how the family, the Kim family, uh, is like a, a parasite, you know, which was, makes the title correct. And it seems like you're supposed to be rooting for the uh, Kim family. Uh, but as the movie goes on, I actually wasn't too fond of them, um, really. But I uh, did kind. Of, I did like the Park family. I mean, yeah, they could be a bit, I guess, rude. But it's really when you watch the movie, if you haven't seen it, you'll get what I mean. I mean, I might say comments or say things to each other, up the knowledge of the other family being around. That they're up. That would be seen as quite insulting or just plain rude and um yeah I yeah it just it just didn't for me just I don't know it seemed like at a certain point we're supposed to really root inside with the Kim family but as the movie goes on I'm kind of like no I yeah, kind of was more into pro of the Ark family. But maybe that's me. Maybe I'm the only person that thinks that. Um, I will say it was quite funny, and I didn't expect the humor to be there. I didn't expect the humor that is there to be as funny as it was. So that was a surprise, honestly. So, But I wasn't really all that uh, uh, affected by that movie, exactly. Um, like so many others are, um, some people who are just like, I, that's just so, it was like moving or just, just punched him in the gut and like sort of like, I guess in a way a reality check. That never did it for me. This film didn't do that for me. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I was missing something, even though I don't, though I don't believe I did. I'm pretty sure I, I know what it was saying to me like it is trying to shove it in my face a bit too much and it's a bit over heavy-handed that's just something I so yeah um, in my la the last film is 1917 I enjoyed this movie um, you know about two soldiers going to uh, send a message to call off a uh, uh, battle or going over you know, trench to fight the Germans in World War One because it's an ambush, it's a trap, it's set, and they have direct orders to not go ahead with it. But you know, as the film goes on, you see what all happens with these two. It's it's, it's very incredible and it's extraordinary. And the director, Sam Mendes, he uh, 
in the end of a film, you see if it's inspired by the stories like his great great grandfather, I would say, he, uh, told him. Um, being in World War One, stuff that happened, you know, he, something similar, I guess, to this. Maybe not exactly, but an event or maybe events fairly similar to what you see in this movie um, happened, and I. Uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a very fine film. It is shot in a way where it's like all one take. Personally, I liked it. I thought that was quite interesting and unique for a war movie, because I can't think of many war movies that do do that. There might be one take or two or shots where it's all done, like maybe, or scenes, I should say, like scenes where it's all one long take. Like they practice and practice for a long time time before finally filming the scene and it's just one big long take maybe like five full minutes of no cutting camera follows the actors and they say all their lines do everything you know that's not just for war films or that could happen but just for any movies um you see a lot of this happening more with like the single take um birdman did that I personally thought it was a bit gimmicky. I mean, I understood why, because, you know, it's about the theater. But I got it. I really got it quite fast. I got what it was doing. I, I, I just was... It just didn't really do it for me for that film. I could talk about that some other time, but, it's, but that's just similar to this. There are people who didn't like that. They thought this was too gimmicky. Whereas I thought the opposite. I thought it was a very interesting and it actually helped me get more engaged to the film it made me more invested into what was going on and it was effective in that way but I can see how some would say it's a gimmick that's uh, but you know that's just me um, again I enjoy these films um, I do not agree with Parasite being best picture the winner or director or screenplay International film, foreign film, I think that's fine. No problem there. Screenplay would have gone to... Oh, mind this. Um, there. I think it should have gone to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I really liked uh, this film and how it was written and everything. This one best supporting actor for Brad Pitt. I'm sure you know that by now. But I really did like... I enjoyed the writing of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood a lot better than Parasite. Um, also, Knives Out was only nominated for screenplay, and it lost. Um, I wasn't too f I wowed by the writing of um, Knives Out personally, but that's me. Maybe I'm alone. In that thought. But that's me. Um, 1917 was fine. Um, but of the films nominated for the Oscars, uh, I would choose The Irishman for Best Picture and Director. And obviously, Tarantino, I believe, should have won his third Oscar. Um, and that's just. That is, if we're to say the Academy and all these other award shows are truly incredible and always nominate the best work of the of the years and that's just not true uh, particularly of this year uh, the lighthouse still wows me to this day um, it is my favorite film of 2019 still apologize for the stupid camera I don't know what it's doing uh, I can't fix that I've tried so if I keep stalling and stopping I don't know what to say apologies that's happened before. Can't do anything with it. Tried. Just sucks. Sorry. Um, probably should get a new one, but uh, especially during what's going on now, that's kind of going to be a bit impossible. At the moment, it's best to save money. So, yeah. But I'm able to at least do this. I've already shown what I wanted to show you. The audio, I think, at this point, is most important. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, 
the lighthouse, I think, gave some of the best performances of the entire year. Uh, it was best directed and best film overall. Uh, I think it deserved a writing uh, nomination. Again, I would say Tarantino would still win, should win, you know, with The Lighthouse nominated. Um, uh, I think for acting, you know, Willem Dafoe should have won supporting. And I even think Pattinson's performance was a bit was even a bit better than Joaquin Phoenix's. But I also think that ties should happen. And there haven't been ties for acting in years. It's like they have it in such a way where that's going to be basically impossible. And um, they, you have to have two people have the exact same vote for there to be a tie. At least as far as what I've uh, read and what I know of with that. So, yeah, you know, Walking Phoenix, you know, wins the Oscar, but I think also with Pattinson, because Robert Pattinson was really a powerhouse, and we follow his character throughout that film. He was incredible. He was just fantastic. Um, uh, and the acting in these films were also good, too. Um, but, you know, they weren't nominated for any Oscars <clears throat> or other awards that I could see. Um, but they didn't really, were really, they didn't, personally for me, they didn't really wow me in terms of, like, deserves an Oscar nomination for their performance or that performance. Um, they were very good, but, you know, not necessarily award-worthy exactly. I know Daniel Craig, for sure, was nominated for a Golden Globe, as was, what's her name? Anna de Amaris. I no doubt I butchered her name. Apologies. If she ever sees this, apologies. Uh, I've never seen her in anything before. At least not that I'm aware of. Maybe I'd have, but I just don't recall her. You know, perhaps that actually tells you how good of an actress she is if I have seen her before, but I don't remember her. It's always possible. Um... But yeah, this is my. Uh, th these were my quick thoughts on these films. Perhaps I will go into d in more depth with them one day. Maybe I won't. Um, sometimes it might be best to just sort of like leave it where it is. Don't say more. Um, that could be for this. These films. Um, I guess it just really depends on. If I'm feeling up to, if I rewatch these movies and I want to talk about them again, that could be. Uh, that could very well be a possibility. You know, I'm not going to say that, that won't. Um, I am. I also just wanted to take a bit of a break from gangster films because I kind of want to talk about some other stuff, like be it Goodfellas or Scarface or something else. I don't know. I've just been a very uh, Talking about gangster films, mobster films, whichever you want to call them, because of the Godfather trilogy I discussed uh, before um, this video, this installment in this series. Um, yeah. I just like, uh, you know, I just want, I like those, the, that genre of films, but I really thought I should just take a bit of a break. And talk about some of the movies I, I have seen and have enjoyed. Um, but then again, I probably won't really talk about other movies that I don't really enjoy. Unless they're part of franchises that I like. So, yeah. Because I like talking about stuff I like, you know. And overall, I did like Parasite, even though I do think that the message it was trying to get across was a bit overhanded. It was a very fine movie. It was enjoyable. I didn't think I wasted my time. And, you know, I think that's always the best mark of a film. As long as you don't think you wasted your time watching it. Uh, 
I think then it's a pretty solid movie. At least in terms of entertainment value, because at least you were entertained, and I did think it was quite funny at various points. So that's a win for me in that regard. Um, I do enjoy them. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's all I have to say about these films. You know, uh, do you enjoy these movies? Do you not enjoy them? Why? Why not? Uh, if you disagree with me on any of these, that's completely fine. Or if you do agree, um, that's fine, too. Um, yeah. Everybody has a different opinion, you know, even if you enjoyed them. Uh, more than me, that's great. Um, you know, we can all like stuff, we can all dislike stuff, we can have similar interests, interests that we very share, rarely share a, a similar uh, enjoyment for a particular movie or movies or a filmmaker. Um, you know, yeah, I just try to talk as plain and as simple as I can. I don't know. Um, for me, if I try to use big words, it would be very... come off as very fake and not genuine. There are people who I've watched and talk about movies who are able to use big words. And it sounds natural. It sounds very fluid with what they're talking about. It doesn't... And they don't necessarily try and say it stuff that makes one feel stupid, you know. I would probably unintentionally try to come, at, or come through as it, not try, I wouldn't try to make anybody watching this feel stupid, you know. But sometimes that just would hap could happen, and I don't want to try, so I try to be as simple as possible, and don't, uh, when I get into a movie, I don't really try to go, super in-depth analyzing it, because, you know, a lot of people do that. Sometimes they're interesting, sometimes they're not. Um, I don't think I would be successful at all that, so there you go. Um, if you uh, enjoyed this video, you can like it or not, I don't know. Comment below if you want, or you don't have to. Do what you want. Um, and uh, I'll see you all next time. Bye. Um, and be sure to have a good day, have a good week, and a great weekend. Great, or great weekend, great week, whatever. I'm confused now. Uh, I've rambled on longer than I should have. And I apologize. So, yeah. See you all next time, and just take care.